This is the second video on vector addition. There are a couple of scenarios that I've put together for you. The first scenario is, let's say you have an object. That object could be a car, it could be a person, it could be a skateboard, bicycle, whatever the case may be. And in this case, I'm just representing that object by a dot. So this object right here is being accelerated towards the right at 5 meters per second squared. And at the same time, it's being accelerated up at 3 meters per second squared. Now remember, acceleration, just like velocity, force, displacement is a vector, because not only does it have a magnitude, not only does it have a measurement, but it also has a direction. So it could be a lot of different reasons why this thing is being accelerated in two directions. Maybe it's a motorboat or a sailboat, and the sailboat's engines are pushing it to the right and accelerating it to the right at 5 meters per second squared, but at the same time, the wind is pushing it up at 3 meters per second squared. So it has two accelerations affecting it. In this case, if I give you a question like this and I say, what is the resultant acceleration? What is the acceleration that comes from these two accelerations? Well, you're going to have to go into your vector addition mode. You're going to start adding vectors. And the first rule of vector addition is rearrange the vectors head to tail so that they're touching head to tail. But remember, when you rearrange them, don't change their direction and don't change their size. So that's what I've done. The A1 is 5 meters per second squared. Acceleration 2, A2 is 3 meters per second squared. So in this drawing, I've rearranged it. I kept A1 where it is, but I picked up A2 and I moved it over. Moving it is OK. I didn't change its direction and I didn't change its size. So I moved it so that they're touching head to tail. One vector's head is touching the other vector's tail. So I have these two vectors and now I have to find the result. Well, this is very simple because it's say they're perpendicular to each other. When they're perpendicular to each other, it's very simple to add vectors because you're going to use Pythagorean theorem. And that's the goal. Whenever you're adding vectors, try and make them parallel to each other where they're both going in the same direction. Because if they're both going in the same direction, it's easy to find the result and you just add them together. Mathematically, you add up those two numbers. And if they're anti-parallel, which means they're going in opposite directions, but they're still in the same axes, so one could be going this way and one could be going the opposite direction, that's also simple to do because you just subtract the two values. The next simple one to do is when they're, in, when they're perpendicular to each other. So what I've done is I've taken these two vectors and I've rearranged them so that they uh, make a right triangle. And to find the resultant, which is the red, that would be the resultant acceleration of these two accelerations, I just use Pythagorean theorem. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So I did the square root of a1, which is 5 meters per second squared, plus the square root um, a2, which is 3 meters per second squared, so a1 squared plus a2 squared, and I took the square root of that, because that's Pythagorean theorem. That will give you the result. But remember, that's not the only thing we need. We also need the direction. So if you need to find theta, go into your mode to find theta using inverse sine, inverse cosine, or inverse tangent. You can use either through any one of those trig functions because you have three sides. Does it make a difference um, what direction they're going in? As long as you follow the rules, you'll always work, you'll work the problem out correctly. So this is a different scenario. In this case, the sailboat or the person, he's being accelerated to the right at 5 meters per second squared and down at 3 meters per second squared. Very similar to this, except you're going to get a different direction. Because in this one, you know the boat or the person or the spaceship is going to go in this direction, which is represented by the red vector. In this case, if you're going to the right, if you're getting accelerated to the right and you're getting accelerated down, you know you're going to go somewhere in this direction. And that's what this drawing confirms. I've redrawn the vectors so that they're touching head to tail, and I use Pythagorean theorem to find the result. You find theta by using inverse sine, inverse cosine, or inverse tangent. Okay. Finally, here's a tougher one. What if I have two vectors? So let's say it's the same sailboat or the person, whatever the case may be. And it's being accelerated up at 3 meters per second squared, but then it's also being accelerated in an ang at, to, at an angle of theta at 5 meters per second squared. So these two are not perpendicular to each other. This angle could be 30 degrees, could be 45 degrees, 60 degrees, whatever the case may be. I'm not going to put a number in there because I'll just leave the variable. We can put the numbers in later. So in this particular scenario, this object still has two accelerations on it. It's being accelerated in two directions, just like the first two scenarios, except the difference is these two directions are not perpendicular to each other. One is pointing up. The other is pointing at an angle theta. So how do you add these two vectors? Well, the simplest thing to do is you break down these vectors into their x and y components. And what does that mean? That means this. You take this vector and you break it up into its x component. Let's call it a1x. Because this is a1, let's call its x component a1x. And then you break it up into its y component, let's call it a1y. Now, that's easy to do. 
Why is it easy to do? Because once again, I built myself a right triangle. So it's very similar to this scenario. For example, if you were to look at the red vector and say, what are the x and y components of the red vector? And work backwards, then this is the x component of this guy, and this is the y component of this guy. It's the x component because it's pointing, it's on the x-axis. And this is the y component because it's on the y-axis. So if you were to work backwards, say, look, this vector came from these two, that's correct. This is the x component, this is the y component that derived the hypotenuse side. So in this particular scenario, that's what we're going to do. We're going to take A1 and we're going to break it up into its x component and into its y component. Well, if you know what the hypotenuse side is, let's say this is 5 meters per second squared, and I give you the angle, let's say I give you the angles to be 30 degrees, 40 degrees, 45, 50, whatever the case is, if you know the hypotenuse and you know the angle, you can use cosine theta to find the adjacent side. And you can use sine theta to find the opposite side. So I'm going to let you do the math over there, because that's a simple part. I just want to go through the process with you. So if you find the adjacent and you find the opposite sides, you have found the two vectors that make up this guy. Now, if you found the two vectors that make up this guy, your drawing can be simplified. It can be simplified because then you just have to focus on these two green vectors and this vector. Because you'll notice that these two guys are pointing in the same direction. And this is perpendicular to these two. So we ignore this guy. Now that we've found his x and y components, his x component and his y component, we can kind of like, we can ignore this vector because we are working with the x and y components and we just use the x and y components because the x and y components are perpendicular to each other. So if I were to redraw this, it would look something like this. The x component would be drawn a1x and the y side would be the y component plus this is going in the same direction as this. If they were going in opposite directions, you'd subtract them. But because they're going in the same direction, you'd mathematically add them onto each other. So what have I done? I've built myself vectors that are perpendicular to each other, very similar to this scenario, very similar to this scenario. So I took the original vector that was at an angle of theta. I used cosine to find its adjacent side. I used sine to find its opposite side. Then I only worked with the adjacent and the opposite side. I only worked with the x component and the y component. So the x component, this is the only guy, only vector that's on the x-axis, so it goes down here. On the y-axis, there are two vectors. So they're both pointing in the same direction, so you can mathematically, whatever number you get for this, you can mathematically add it to this guy, and you'll know what the length of this side is. Now that you have something that's perpendicular, you're going to use Pythagorean theorem. And that's how you're going to find the resultant acceleration. And let's label the resultant acceleration A subscript R. That can, can be the way you find the resultant acceleration by doing A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So you're going to take the square root of this side squared plus this, plus this side squared. You use Pythagorean theorem and you get the result of this vector. You find the result of acceleration. And then finally, you can use inverse sine, inverse cosine, and inverse tangent to find theta. So the key is, whenever you're adding vectors, add them head to tail. It's simplest when they're parallel to each other, pointing in the same direction. It's also very simpler when they're anti-parallel, pointing in the opposite direction, but still in the same axes, because you can add them or subtract them. If they're pointing in the same direction, add them. If they're pointing in the opposite direction, subtract them. If they're perpendicular to each other, no problem. Just add them. Put, rearrange them so that they're head to tail, so that you get the right direction, and then uh, use Pythagorean theorem to get the right magnitude, because that's important. We need the correct direction and the correct magnitude. That's why you have to rearrange them, because if you did Pythagorean theorem over here, that would that would give you the right magnitude, but it gives you the wrong wrong direction. We know that this object has to go in that direction, so you've got to rearrange them. Uh, if you ever get vectors that are not perpendicular to each other break up the vectors into their x and y components using sine and cosine. And then combine all the x components to find out what your x vector is, and combine all the y components to find out what your y side is going to look like. And remember, if the x components are going in the same direction, add them together. If they're in the opposite direction, subtract them. If the y components are going in the same direction, just like this problem, when you put them together, add them together. So you'll numerically just sum up these two numbers, and you'll know what this side is. Then what you've done is you've made everything into a right triangle and perpendicular vectors are much easier to work with. So you find the resultant acceleration by using Pythagorean theorem.